Good evening. I am Amadine Obewe. Now, elections are an opportunity for the people to select and choose their leaders uh, who take over the affairs for a given amount of time. Now, that being said, elections are also an opportunity to ensure representation because those who vote need to see some of themselves within those who they've chosen to lead them. That being said, uh, let's take a look now in the aftermath of the 2023 general elections, including the presidential, national assembly, state election, and state assembly elections. We take a look now at it from the angle of representation, particularly women representation. How much of that did we witness in this election cycle? What are the lessons to be learned? Uh, we now have about a 3.5% representation of women in the National Assembly. What does this mean for the future and for women participation in times to come? How can this be fixed? How can this be remedied as more election cycles are to come? This and many more will be discussing uh, today or tonight, pardon me, on Top Talk. And uh, my guest tonight to do some justice to this is Ambassador Kinika Tor. She speaks to me now about uh, these issues and how women can forge ahead to ensure representation in politics, governance, and in the nation at large. All right, Ambassador Kinika Tor, welcome to Top Talk. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, let's start with um, your general overview. Um, let me just roll out some numbers there before we uh, go ahead. Uh, women got about 15 seats, you know, at the end of um, the elections, talking about the National Assembly. This represents 3.5% of the total. While men, uh, as we speak, have got about 408 seats, which repre represents 96.5% of the seats. What, what's your take on the performance or the representation we're seeing for women at the end of this election cycle, particularly the National Assembly? Well, uh, just like you've seen that we've never attained 5%. Um, at the 8th Assembly, we had seven women, for example, in the Senate. At the Ninth Assembly, we had, we had seven then. We have eight now. Uh, but uh, this time around, it has dropped, you know, significantly to three. Mm. And it's, um, it's disheartening. It's a thing of concern. And uh, it's a call for women supporting women. You know, because I only say it and I mean it, that women that are there already, when you do the right thing by ensuring that you project to other women, encourage them to be in secular politics. For example, I was talking about Labour Party. Mm -hmm. Labour Party, so many people came through, had over seven, 40, about 46 or 47, you know, persons came in through Labour Party in the chambers, especially the House of Rep, in the House of Rep, for example. And um, we didn't have, you know, women that much mm -hmm. if, coming from the angle of the youth, but we had a lot of youth. Yes. So uh, parties, uh, my party, APC, did so well in giving women opportunity, in fact, they were the highest. We had the highest number of women representation during uh, those that were given the tickets to run. But you know, if the other upper parties had done the same, we would have had more women also joining to come on board now, but it's not the same. So it's a time for all of us to you know, consider, start considering ourselves first as women and vote for ourselves as women. And then also persuade the men, because of course they are the head of the family, they are the head of the country and all of that. They are the head everywhere. God has placed his sewer. We can't fight God. We can only persuade them to remind them that that, that God has put into us, if they fear God, they will allow us to, be, to contribute our quarter. And that goes a long way to give me, like I said this morning, Kakaki, that I feel so happy because the man that has, you know, emerged as president-elect, President, -elect, President um, Bola Metinubu, and of course his wife, she's a woman, that she likes to develop the women, she likes to support the women. I'm sure that women will experience, even though we have low turnout, we have low representation right now, women will definitely be you know be remembered this time around because this is a man that has got that you know his gender sensitive he's a he for she that's Bola Metinubu and even Kashim Shatima they give you listening ears they, they encourage you even as a woman you know so I know that we're gonna have a good representation especially if the government can have a rethink on the as on the part of 
you know, signing into Bill 35 percent affirmative action, meaning that anywhere that I'm going to be contesting, I'll be contesting with women. <coughs> Excuse me. So whoever emerges the winner will definitely still be a woman. So that way we'll have more representation. And I said in 2021, we have Cameroon, we have Kenya, we have uh, Rwanda um, sign into law this 35 percent affirmative action. And as you can see, Rwanda is not only 35 percent, but today 61.25 percent representation of women in the parliament. Mm -hmm. And it's most, one of the most leading African countries as is conspicuously seen now. And that is because women has got a lot of potentials, a lot of things, a lot to, to pour out it from inside of them, deposited by God, you know. So Nigeria should also begin to understand that women are necessary in government, in, in, the, in the affairs of, the, uh, of government. And we are not very good with violence, with chaos, with asking people's children to become thugs for our sake. We are not very good at that because we are mothers. And we wouldn't be far happy seeing our children on the streets. So like I always, uh, you know, advocate and speak to people. I say, look, if anybody asks you to talk for him, he or she or whoever, tell the person to send you along with the child. If they can send you along with their children or their sons or their daughters, then you should be on the streets. If not, say no to it. If the youth understand this aspect and begin to shun it and say no to that, then we'll have a better uh, serene society where women can all come and context based on their capacity, their credibility, their competency, and not on issue of ballot box to learn and all kind of things. Because in politics, all you hear is win. Others can go to court, you know. So we need to also win credibly, you know, and our votes should count. But thank God that votes are beginning to count now, regardless of what people are saying. When something doesn't fall in your line, you see it that it's not credible, it's wrong. We had the best moment of our electoral cycle this time around, where people who are unexpectedly uh, in the, uh, winning the election against incumbent governors who wish to be in the Senate or in the House of Rep, or, uh, apart from uh, like the big boys in the, in the states that wish to be even in the House of Rep, and those that have been there for too long, be swept out by just an ordinary man. And it's not this time, it's not vote buying anymore, you understand? So it means that if the INEC isn't working effectively, it means they won't even allow it. Those people would have paid their ways through and get those people, sh you know, kicked out. Yeah. But the reverse is the case. So it means we are getting there and it's work in progress. So as we speak for the women, I believe some women are already discouraged, but I talk to them at all times. I say, look, don't get discouraged. You should know that you still have a time to, to, you know, to get back. I believe in the next electoral cycle, women will come out in large numbers if they continue to see that a young man who didn't have anything, maybe a Rokada rider, now is in the, in the green chambers. It means that a woman also can come in there. You know. So Nigeria is beginning to witness the best of electoral cycle, and I know it's going to be quite encouraging for the women. All right, so that's um, really fair enough. But uh, let, let's talk about, you know, the, the things hindering women from participating properly. Uh, the other day, um, ICPA, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, did a study and they found out that the national wealth uh, uh, of uh, the subtotal national wealth of the country is less because when you look at men who have more, the women have, you know, drastically lower. So at the end of the day, it reduces the whole thing. And they say, you know, education and all that will enable women get to the place where it's almost uh, equal. So the issue now is, even if a woman is interested and she wants to, issues of funding and all that, how do we, you know, start to, you know, allow that to happen? <coughs> we have parties who give discount, but uh, we find mm -hmm. out that even the discounted prices are the prices that men pay in other parties, you know, especially in the main parties. Mm -hmm. So how really can we help women especially financially speaking, so that they can participate like anyone else? Well, you know, we women, we, do, we, do, we always feel we don't have too many, you know, issues, like when it comes to finance. Mm. And so the little we have, we are contented people. When you see where a man is contesting for any position and a woman, you see the man spending so much money because they know how to get this money, even any, however they can. Mm. But the woman is there with integrity, trying to run away from impunity and all of that and so they make less you know so that is why we are asking for that 35 percent affirmative action mm -hmm. and not only that we are also asking 
that you know the way the electoral circle is running now if it can continue and improve from upon where it is now then we'll be able to get there and if women can also support women men contribute for each other when they are contesting but women you see that at the end of the day they even go to support the men against the women if we can begin to orient the women to say look the more representation they ha we have the more we get what belongs to us because the men will always want to do theirs first before they look at the you know women angle so yes finance has been a major uh, challenge but if you look at Adamawa State, finance is not an issue. Benani was able to match, you know, the incumbent governor on equal might. And it's amazing. Do you understand? Yeah. So it means that she also was able to, like, like you know, in finance aspect, she, she, she uh, like her land, she gives a lot to people and a lot, even before the uh, election. Mm -hmm. So women are also understanding that fact that they need to work harder. You know, <clears throat> yes, you're right when you say, we are low in finance. It's it's it, it's like it's just there. It's like it's a general phenomenon. It's like it's a mystery. Mm. Do you understand? But when we have our position given to us, uh, okay, just this area should be for the women. Definitely, we'll be able to have more representation. What we're asking is representation. And uh, again, if we have women who can come together and advocate for each other, it will also help us, you know, in the area of finance. And like you see, my party, like I know, a, 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 APC. We gave women just uh, for, just to showcase themselves and say, but you know, it is only what you pay for that you value. Mm. If not, we would ask for free uh, form. But I'm one of those people that used to say no to free form because they don't value you. A man who has gone to pay seven million, are you coming to say you free completely? You didn't even show any expression of interest or pay anything. They will be taking you for granted because they will say you have nothing to lose. I have paid the money, so step down for me. All those kind of things is that things I don't like to hear. So in area, even if women can build enough to pay whatever the men are paying, is not the issue now. Is after doing that, will we be given the same opportunity and the same level uh, playing ground and the same a, a, a free society and a, 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 a talk free society or f talk free electoral moments to be able to contest with the men you will not see that we will even win them because people are tired of the, the men <laughs> men are big <laughs> so <laughs> yeah my fathers my husband my brothers but the truth needs to be told yeah. you know so that is how i see it yeah. so it's time for women to begin to advocate for each other and opportunities or funds should also be given to women yeah. you know we don't go there to go and embezzle we go there to ensure that things are done rightly because we believe that nigeria is like our baby everyone including whoever i see now is my son regardless of your age you're my son because we are the mothers mm. we are the wives and we are the daughters so we have equal um opportunity we serve in three angles mother daughter wife so the men also should understand that fact and see okay if our place is going to be in the kitchen that thing that God has given to us, how do we now contribute our quota to the betterment of the country? Mm -hmm. So if that, you know, expression of interest form, it's okay. But not sure it shouldn't end there. We should have an area designated for women and say, okay, if we're able to achieve that, and it's not like it's a wrong thing, because at least I've just mentioned about three country, countries that are doing good with it. Mm -hmm. And especially the one that I said, Rwanda, having more women taking decisions. When women take decisions, they consider a lot of things. They consider that their children are there, their husband, their, you know, they, have, they consider a lot, their father. They consider so much, you know, before they take these decisions. But sometimes men, you know, with too much burden in them, they can just go and, you know, it is what, it is the, the how do I put this, how somebody feels at the time that whatever is going to come out of him will come out. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a, in a distressed uh, mood now um, and, and in, uh, in anger, uh, uh, angry mood. Mm. What I'm going to give you now is like, uh, I'm, uh, you know, whatever you say now, just respond in an angry form because I, I got here from outside angry. So I'm going to bring out what is the inside of me. So but women are always there to bring out motherhood, you know, back to Nigeria. Mm. So Nigeria will experience a better moment with women and thank God for um, Bola Metinubu, our president elect, he's a man that has got a lot to do when it comes to women development. And as you can see, I, I, I don't think I would say I've overflowed this statement, but 
he still remained the first person to consider a woman as a deputy governor. And even this lady that made it from APC in Lagos State, it's through his influence and he spoke to Sawolo and they, they, they supported her. She contested with other people. She won. And at the end of the day, she won again and she's there to go and represent the women. So without that support from Bola Metinobu, maybe in Lagos now, even in Nigeria in general, we won't even have a woman there. So I thank God for that uh, move because it has actually made us to understand that this is a man that we surely take women along in this um, next administration. All right, so that's fair enough. So I, I, I want to ask now about, you know, like you say, there's positives and negatives to everything. The 35% affirmation and creating a space to speak about, uh, people say there's also a little bit of a danger in there. And I want to know how you think women can handle this. Uh, <coughs> it's a problem that people say happens even in parties. Take, for instance, um, when they have a youth leader, you know, they feel that um, when major decisions are being made, you don't really need to speak to them. Your, your domain is youths. So they, they make decisions that affect everybody. And they say, you know, well, just go and tell the youths. Same thing with women in that some, you know, some of the dangers we see. So I remember there was a bill that was proposed where they were going to create a number of seats for women. And so the, the issue now is, how do you fight that, um, uh, what I call it, backlash, where people feel that this is the women angle? You know, so when they are making decisions, they say, no, this is not general. You know, so <coughs> wait a minute. You know, so how do you fight that? So that when um, uh, you are given that space, it is not seen as, oh, we just gave it to you and you <coughs> are not really meant to be in the thick of things. What's the way to battle that? <laughs> well, um, when we say some designated number of seats for women, we are only saying at least we will be sure to have the re this representation. Uh, Rwanda only signed 35 percent, not 61 points. Mm. They only signed 35 percent. That is to say, at minimum, let's have this number of representation of women in this parliament. But you see how you shot to 61? Because when you are doing good, they want you to continue to do good. If they are bringing out enacting laws that is to the good of the society, for the public, to the public interest, they want them to do more. And that is how now you see, and they see that whatever they are doing is actually developing the country, you know, maximally. Mm. They want them to be there. They want more of the women uh, uh, representation because they are seeing the dividend of democracy. They are seeing the best time of their lives and all of that. So it's to the minimum. So when you say some seats are designated, it's not like, oh, women should no longer come to other areas. Mm. They should just remain there. No. It means that, worst case scenario, we should have these women. So let's allow them to have this. They are the weaker self. They are the, God has made it so, not man. They are our mothers, they are our sisters, they are our, our wives. So let's let give them a chance to support us. Because you see, in a, in, a, in a place where you have men and you don't have a woman, you don't have the color. It's not balanced. Even if it's one woman, once she gets in there, there's so much, so much colors and all of that. She wants to, like yesterday, we were at the Unity Fountain. And when I got there as a woman, I made sure they were all dancing. I mm -hmm. said, we're celebrating His Excellency Bola Metinubu. And we're sitting, no, we should dance. That's what the woman can do. We want to add colors. We want to make everybody feel sense of belonging, feel at ease, feel relaxed, and all of that. So you can imagine a place without a woman. <laughs> Are you getting my point? So they're only saying... Is this number of women, with this number of women, I think as we are speaking as men, they are women to guide us to say, because women are very sensitive people. Mm -hmm. They see even before the men. Because what a woman will see, just like what another will see sitting down, a child that is climbed, that is up, may not even see those things. The same applies to women and men. Men are carried away with too many distractions. But women are focused. We are already built, our system uh, 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 is built, uh, our system is built such that we can multitask. Men are not like that. If you allow a man to be pregnant, to have baby in his bag, to wash the clothes and sweep the house and go to work and do, they will collapse. Like I do so many things at school, 
I mean, at, at, at my work, I'm doing my, my Wibokwenu for Asiwaju Shetima, Omali Goku Progressive Initiative, so many things at the same time. And people used to wonder, how do you balance these things? Because we appear to balance these things. We are not distracted. So the little time we have, we use it positively. Unlike the men, they have a lot that bothers them. You know, they have their family, they have their wives, and all sort of, you know, to take care of. And it takes some chunk of their time and their mindset you know so when they are all you know enveloped in such depression and in such a uh, heavy you know stress pressures from different areas a woman in that environment will be able to say ah no my men no this thing is not going right let's do it this way and i always tell women please when you are doing that don't come and show yourself eh, i am this i am that so anything i say is to be taken eh, no you should just massage your egos they are men persuade them and I keep telling women, we are the neck. Mm. See? The men are the neck, are the head. We are the neck. But where you turn your neck to, there your head will go. Mm. So meaning that you've got so much power, but the manner, your manner of approach, the way you operate it, is what now matters. It's what gives you the results you desire. If you operate it such that you want them to feel you are the woman, so the men should go down, they will show you that God has made them the head. But when you come like a, a fool, to get everything you want. My father, my husband, you know I'm your daughter. Please, I just need to demonstrate my own capacity in this area. They may begin to think about it. And when they give you that opportunity, and you, they see what you can do, they can sometimes relax and see you grow. You know, we are getting there. But nevertheless, women, first of all, what have you done for your fellow woman? Are you a supporter of women? Or you see another woman as competition instead of strength? Knowing that we're all weak. Are you, what do you see another woman as? That is what matters most now. So after this period, by the time the tenth uh, assembly kicks off, the presidential, uh, the, the, by May 29, we have our president-elect, vice president-elect take position of authority in this country. Then women will now come back to the round table and ask ourselves, how did we go from seven and increased by one to eight and decreased by so much as five women? I'm using the Senate as a yes, case yes. study here. How did we get to that level? And that is a, a thing of concern and it's, it's disheartening and it needs to be, to be leaked into yeah. as quick as possible. It is indeed. It's something that requires a lot of thoughts and discussion. So now let's talk about the women who have made it there. Um, I want to know, do, do you think it's fair, you know, the, I like to say the pressure, attention put on this few? Uh, mm -hmm. There are people who are just waiting, you know, they just want one slip up. You say, this is why we don't allow women here, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, how, what do you make of that um, uh, intense pressure? Because it's as though when you have so many men, the pressure is spread very thinly across. But now we have just uh, three women in the mm -hmm. Senate and it's, it's like, you know, there's a, there's a microscope on them. Do you think they should, you know, you know, you know, meet that pressure and say we must be perfect, or mm -hmm. it is the people who are putting the pressure who need to relax and give them equal playing field? Okay, well, um, you see, like I said, we are the neck, mm -hmm. the men are the head. The power of a woman cannot be emphasized if you know how to apply it in a subtle manner, in a humble manner, and get what you want. When they say power, doesn't mean you should go for giddy with the men. It means that you should look for that area where things you say to massage their ego and get what you want. Now, what am I trying to say? It's a time for women now. We have in the Red Chamber, we have River State Bamigo, we have Adirati from Lagos State, and this is PDP, this is APC, then we have Reti Kingibe. These are women of capacity. These are women of competence. These are women of capability. They should be non-partisan from now henceforth. If not, we'll not get there. They shouldn't see that, that party aspect. If uh, we have to move forward as, we, as women, you should remove that party and see themselves like we are few. So if we come together to be as one, most times it's difficult. But at this time when it's, 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 so, it's so bad, they need to do that. We are three, and we are new. We are, they are all fresh, so they are not even experienced. Yeah. 
three of them can decide to get people to, you know, when they say people get into a place and they are not experienced, you, when you want to remain unexperienced, that you remain. If you want to be experienced, you know those that you consult to teach you, to nurture you, and you should be ready to learn. Yes. Not when they are teaching you as a woman, you are showing them that you know it. If you know it, why are you coming to be tutored? Even when you know something, you keep quiet and listen, a listener gets it right. Don't speak too much. Listen to people. So if these three women can say, can we go on training? These men are more experienced. Some of them, we have more men back that are experienced and we don't have any woman to even guide us. They should not be ashamed to look at, to look for uh, women that were there before. You know, we have so many women that were there before. Some women that were doing good where they were there. We have Binani herself, you know, they can reach out to her to say, how were you able to do this to the extent that you moved from House of Assembly to Rev, from Rev to Senate, from Senate to Cuba. And it is that step that is giving her the victory she's, you know, accruing today. Even you should, she not even emerge or make victorious at the end of the day. She has laid a landmark. She has broken the genes. They have broken barriers already. Because women could never have thought that they would get to this stage. So she's able to get here, meaning that I can get there, meaning that any other woman can get there. It's actually an encouraging factor. So how were you able to do this? Guide us. We don't want to fail. Three of them. But if they want to go in line of party affiliates or differences, uh, then they are bound to fail. Because the men who so make use of their brains and take advantage of their divinity, division, I mean, they will take so much advantage of their division and capitalize on it to bring the women down the more. Well, if they see that these three men have gone on the round table to say, hey, Ereti, you are very competent. Adrati, you are good. If not, you wouldn't have made it, even though you were given opportunity to, have, to be the candidate of the party APC. You did well. Against all odds, the tsunami that came <laughs> into Nigeria. Bamingo, you have done well. We are not women. Let's sit down. What do we do? How do we speak to these men? How do we have more women? Three of them should in fact have a foundation of women development. Three of them. And speak to us that are outside the circle of, of parliaments, legislatures. They are there to enact the law. How will their voice be heard? They are few. But when they come together, those three of them decide, is this where we are going? Let's remain there. Not after decision. Somebody will go and backstab you behind. I'm really begging them. For us to be, if so, that when you get there, it's no more about parties, about nine women. You are now representing us, even as much as you are representing the youth and Nigeria in totality, you are still representing the women more because three from eight down to three is a bad, bad scenario. So please, uh, these three great women, the onus is on you to do the, the best you can. And for those in the house of rep, the same thing goes to you. Enough of this MV. You know, you are not from my zone, yet you envy me. So will I take what belongs to you? Yeah. You're not from my region, yet you envy me. What will I take from you? Why should you block mine? And you see, Genesis 56, 56 20 says something. When you try to do things against somebody, just like when the president, when he was going through a lot of hazards, you know, uh, backstabbing here and there, I used to tell people, I said, my son preached one day, I said, Genesis 50, 20, that when you plan something against someone god turn it to his favor she, when they said naira issue came on it's going to affect affect him and all of that it helped him because he didn't know no reason to spend any money so there will not be anybody saying they cut your people's giving money or buying votes because there was no cash to buy any vote so he planned that in his favor you know so the same thing applies to women when you think you are fighting somebody you don't know that whatever you are doing against that person will end up for, the, for good for that person. So we should know, we should begin to think of how we see ourselves. I don't know what the challenge is all about. You don't know what is in my account. I don't know what you have in your account. So what's the big deal? So you, after wearing this, my car now, you don't know if I, even, if I have one naira in my account. You don't see it, but you see me looking good and happy. What gives you joy may be billions. What gives me joy may be millions. So it's about who is healthy and who is alive and who has joy. I'm healthy, I'm alive, and I'm very happy. My four children are doing okay. So what should bother me? So these are things we should be, begin to look at. When we get to that stage, then we can say, okay, women are ready, but 
sometimes I see it as far fetched, but I also see it as get where I get in there too. All right, those are mm. great words to end the program. Thank you so much, yeah, Ambassador, for coming and for sharing your thoughts. Thanks for coming and talk talk. Thank you. Thank you so much.